Hey guys, Larry Hankins here, and would you know it, I'm reviewing something for the first time in many years. Uh, this time we're reviewing the figure Gigawatt, or Gigawatt. Uh, this is the Transformers Back to the Future collaborative crossover figure that uh, I have been waiting literal years for this thing to happen. Uh, in my life, I've always wished for Hasbro to make like a whole line of Transformer figures based on movie and TV uh, characters. Now, we got our first glimpse of that last year when Ectotron came out. And Ectotron's awesome, and I think that was aw a great figure. But I've always wanted the DeLorean. Uh, Back to the Future, just a real quick thing, is one of my favorite movies. Actually, is my favorite movie of all time. It's a movie I could sit down and watch anytime and still feel all the emotions I did from the first few times I ever watched it. It, it genuinely is such a great movie, and I love it dearly. All the characters and everything, and the series is great as well. But I, I've always wanted a DeLorean, so... At first, some people were telling me, oh, there's rumblings, they're doing it, uh, or there is going to be one, but I, they never showed pictures or anything, which, whatever, that's fine. But it was kind of weird out of nowhere to see Maverick be the next figure and not a DeLorean, and whatever. Right here, you could see I do have Gigawatt, or Gigawatt. It is uh, kind of debated on what the name is, Obviously, in the movie, Doc Brown says Gigawatt, but the toy is spelled the exact same way, Gigawatt. You're going to hear me say Gigawatt, because even though that is the homage I'm, I'm expecting from the line, from it just sounds and looks better to say just Gigawatt. Anyway, we're starting with the box, so... It is themed after a G1 package, and I really, really, really dig that. Uh, from the Transformers more, me more Than Meets the Eye, the grid line, everything. I love it. It's the top of it showing the easy steps of the transformation, which it isn't that easy, but it's still pretty cool. An artwork of Gigawatt, as if he was a G1 figure. The little thing right there that says his name in the G1 style. The little old style Hasbro. I like that little touch right there now seeing it. And I also like the little flames here. Just a little nice touch. Also to show that, hey, this is part of the collaborative series. Um, just a nice little touch. Uh, the Back to the Future 35. Because Back to the Future did turn 35 this year. So that's pretty cool. On the side, same thing. Old G1 vintage kind of look there. Now, on the back, uh, normally they would have the, the sprawling artwork of a battle between the Autobots and Decepticons, but for this one, it's just the DeLorean uh, with a flame trail behind, which I would have preferred an old kind of G1 thing, but I, I'm never going to dislike this kind of thing, you know? Uh, they have the old tech specs kind of thing for, you know, G1 figures, and then after that, it's just the usual mumbo-jumbo of today. Uh, this is licensed by Universal and Amblin Studios, so I'm glad to see that. Uh, just all that kind of stuff, and this side is always interesting to me. So, the G1 toys have been, uh, you know, they always just show something else here. This is so cool. Uh, this is just a picture of the DeLorean leaving the trailer, or the truck in the first movie. Now, this is what's cool. So, you can, I've seen this before. You can open this normally, like you can just open this to the side. But this is such a cool little homage, you can pull this down, like the truck, and you can... It, it's such a nice little nod. Now, you might be wondering why I'm not showing that off. Um, and I don't know why exactly either, because uh, I already have it opened. I accidentally left my pre-order open for this guy. And I bought this guy off of GameStop because he came out earlier. So, let's begin with an actual more in-depth review with Gigawatt. Here we have Gigawatt in his car mode. This is a standard little DeLorean, well, Back to the Future DeLorean, and it's such a nice... Not, I really do mean it. it. It's so awesome to have a Transformer that is also the Back to the Future DeLorean. Uh, there are... One little minor gripe, they do not have the DMC logo right here, but... 
it's so minor, like I said. And I assume Repro Labels are going to be making a set for this figure, probably. If not, I think I could live without the little, the tiniest little DMC logo on it. So, either way, I, I very much enjoyed the detail they put on this figure. Like, all the little stuff back here. Even the fact that some of this is even painted is, is great. And just that random little green wire painted, that's just... That's awesome. That's just genuinely awesome to see that. Uh, it does have the out-of-time license plate, which, very nice touch. The little backlights. You rarely have figures nowadays with, like, you know, the tail lights, so it's good to see that. Uh, yeah, just, I, I can't... I, I can't talk about this figure enough about how much I enjoy it. And I also don't want to keep going on about it because I don't want this video to be too long for people. I mean, after all, this isn't the first review of this figure anyway. Something I do want to note is that the original release of this figure, or the pre-shots of this thing, this was just clear plastic, and it didn't look good. You saw these bars in here that are in the window, and you can kind of still see them today. Uh, you could see that, and... It just didn't look good, so I'm glad they listened to people about it on, hey, you might want to redo that. And luckily they did, and they have a darker tinted window. And like I said, you could still see the bars in the car mode, but it it's, it's not noticeable if you're just looking at it from a quick glance. Real quick, this figure is a remold of an existing toy, which so far the collaborative line is that. I don't think Maverick is, but we're not talking about Maverick. Uh... Gigawatt is a remold, retooling of the Siege Sideswipe. Now, the Siege Sideswipe mold is a pretty damn good mold, so I'm kind of glad they are using that. Uh, there have been many customs over the years, uh, some of which have used like the Prowl, Blue Streak, and Smokescreen mold for Masterpiece. But I honestly think that the Sideswipe mold is the best way to go about having a DeLorean Transformer, especially since there's that old video back in the day of uh, of a guy who G, like made a G1 DeLorean Transformer, and they used the original G1 Sideswipe mold. And I think that is the best way to go about it, since it is just a sleek, sloped kind of toy. But, yeah, um, you don't obviously notice the similarities right now, but later on I will show you a lot of the similarities of this figure. We talked about him real quick. Uh, the other collaborative figure uh, is Actotron. How does he scale well with it? I honestly think this is a good scale for Actotron and Gigawatt. Some people may disagree with me, saying that, oh, this guy's like too big. Now this figure does come out to be a Voyager-sized toy, and this one becoming today's deluxe class. I don't have a problem with that. I think that actually works well. Uh, just to show a little bit more. But, yeah. I I honestly think this is a perfect scale for this toy. So, I have no quarrels with it. Gigawatt isn't the only DeLorean Transformer to ever exist. So, I did want to show off. It's, it's the original. Uh, this is Swindler. This is the Siege Swindler. Uh, but it is the closest, like, newest iteration to the DeLorean Transformer. Uh, obviously this figure is also not 100% a DeLorean, but we've come a long way, I think, uh, from something as smaller than your thumb to something that actually transforms and actually has articulation, so there's that. And just because I can, here he is with the Lego DeLorean. Uh, he's a little bit smaller, and it's kind of what I expected. Uh, honestly, I've had this, I've had Gigawatt for a few weeks now, and this is the first time I'm actually looking at it with the Lego DeLorean, and it is what it is, I suppose. Now, Gigawatt does come with a couple accessories. Uh, we'll start with not my favorite one to begin with. He does come with the hook from the first movie whenever... The DeLorean is back in time, and they don't have any plutonium, so they need a lightning bolt. And they fashion this to hit a wire. Whenever Marty gets 88 miles per hour and the lightning strikes the wire, 
to this. I honestly, it's one of the best movies ever. Uh, so you get this, and it's not my favorite because it's just rubber, and I don't care for that. And they made a Playmobil version recently, and I think it's a much better bit of plastic, but we're not talking about the Playmobil, we're talking about Gigawatt. So you plug it back here, there is a little little porthole right there. You plug it in right here. Come on. There you go. You got the DeLorean, and you can make it hit the pole, the, the wire. And yeah, I think that's a nice touch that they even bothered with this, or even added it. Uh, problem is, is I hate the fact that uh, it makes it look like it's mandatory to own this, but whatever. Uh, the other accessory he comes with has been in hiding in plain sight, uh, more than meets the eye, if you will. Uh, his gun is right under the car, kind of like a little fusion blaster from Optimus Prime. I would say it is, and like this is my favorite part is that it does hide so well. You don't know what you're looking at, but it is there. It's been there the entire time. Now, this accessory is also one of my favorites, but it also is my least favorite. It is the Mr. Fusion in the end of Back to the Future 1 and the beginning of Back to the Future 2, where they put the garbage in this to instead of putting plutonium in it. I very much enjoy it that they even included this, and I really do enjoy it. You plug it in here, and... This is where I think I both love this thing, and I both hate it, too. So, you see I'm kind of struggling with this thing. It looks great to have that. It, it, it gives you the Back to the Future 2 look without adding too much to it. Now, obviously, you can't change the license plate on the back. However, my copy has the tendency of it coming off really easily. Now, some people have it perfectly fine. Some people don't. And I also find that if you squeeze in this right here, when you're transforming it, it also doesn't fix it well. And maybe that was the issue I had just a second ago, is because I didn't have it pressed in all the way. You can get this to stay in. It's just that it's kind of a pain to even get it to bother. Now I got it to work. So, now that I spoke, talked about Back to the Future 2, does this figure let you do the one cool thing that Back to the Future 2 DeLorean did? The answer is, well, duh. It obviously lets you fold in the wheels. Now, the tricky part is that the front ones are a little different. You have to not only bend this in, but you also have to bend it right back out. It's kind of hard to explain. Let me try to show it. You bend it in, then you bend it in again, and then you bend it right back out. Kind of hard to explain. And there you have it in its little flight mode. And if you happen to have one of the flight sticks, a Transformer flight stick or any kind of figure, I have one for my MP tracks or KO tracks, whatever. Doesn't matter. And there you go. Well, whoops. You have Flying DeLorean if you want to display it like that. I think that's a really cool touch. And I, uh, I'm i immensely proud that they, like I said, this is a retool of the Sideswipe mold. To even have that feature is such a great bonus, and I very much enjoy it. Now, of course, this thing is a Transformer, so... It transforms. So to begin, if you didn't take this off or have it even on, if you already had it on, take it off, take the gun out, and I like starting with the legs first because they are the easiest. So first you go up under here, you transform this part right here, and you take these flaps out. You, well actually, something I forgot to even mention, and this is one of my other favorite things. This is something they honestly never had to do. The doors open. The doors open. 
The fact they added that is so great, in my opinion. So great, I broke my voice. I cracked my voice. I love that feature. But the fun part is, is that's what you need to do to start the transformation. Sorry for my premature on that. So, now, flip these out and do this. You then turn this around. So this part's kind of tricky to get these little feet out, but here's a little nice trick. The little intake, outtakes, push them in. You got your feet down. You can now just close those up and you can fixate these however you wish. Separate the two. And you got the bottom done. Now the top is where it kind of gets tricky. Uh, but obviously, uh, this is kind of how I start because there is one different little thing that they added to this transformation. It's this part right here. So, I first just crack the, wind, the, the, the hood down and then I get these parts to all the way flip to the side. Same thing, flip to the side. Now, we can splay the arms out as far as possible. And now, this is the part I, I, I kind of have trouble with most of the time because I forget how it goes. Okay, you flip it in like that, and you just, there you go. Now, the wheels earlier, you saw that they go all the way in. So, flip that all the way in. All the way in. And then you shut this, and you tab that in. So this is the fun part also. You gotta tab this thing into this. I don't know why I'm saying it's a fun part when literally it's so easy now to me. It might be a trouble when you first have the toy. You obviously now flip out the fists. Uh, the gold wing doors, you can have them still out or flush as possible. It's up to you, it's your own, it's your own toy. And there we go. Gigawatt in his robot mode. Words can't describe how much I love this thing. It is so damn cool, and I love it so much. I I, I, I always have to keep reiterating, Back to the Future is one of my favorite thing movies of all time, and Transformers is one of my favorite franchises of all time. So to have the two together is mind-boggling. And the, you know what? That was just for the car mode alone. And for the life of me, I never could figure out what they would do for a robot mode. And honestly, they nailed it. Like I've said, I've always thought the sideswipe mold is perfect for a DeLorean Transformer. So now we got it. My only gripe I do have is that because it is the way it is and there is no way to make it more engineered, you do kind of have a really big chest. But otherwise, you get used to it after a while. It really is... It, it, it's... It, I, I, can't, I can't get mad at it. I really cannot get mad at it. Real quick, um, he does have some new... Decals or what I'm... What I'm what's the word? Details, I suppose, is the, the right word. In robot mode, for one, there's some little flux capacitors or looking things on his shins now. On his knees. Uh, some nice little detail. Nothing painted, but I can't really get mad or angry about it. Everything still is the same from the car mode from there. But the big thing you may notice is, uh, well, this right here. So, he has the flux capacitor out on display right here, right in the middle of him. And then he has the dates on his the timestamps on his on his chest and I love this little edition November 12th 1955 that's the day uh, that he got uh, the lightning storm happened October 21st that's the day they go into the future and October 26th 1985 is the day I do believe that Marty and Doc first do the time uh, experiments so such an awesome little thing the, the, you know what? Once again, it's something they didn't have to add, but they did, and I greatly appreciate it. Now, another thing I didn't mention, really, is that his head. So, it is somewhat just the sideswipe head, 
But now he has goggles like Doc Brown. And I, and that's one thing I do appreciate with this figure is not only is it an homage to Back to the Future with just the movie and the elements of it, but it is an element towards the characters. Now, there is a comic, I do believe, but I've not read the comic just yet. But I do enjoy that this thing also takes appearance from Doc Brown. And there might be some personality of Marty McFly. I'm not sure yet. I need to read the comic eventually. But the fact that it has, like, what I would assume, say is, like, the creator in, like, just the appearance alone is such a nice little touch. Just the goggles. They do look weird at first, but when you realize it's just goggles, you just kind of be like, well... That is, I guess, what it's supposed to look like. Now, the accessories, uh, they do come back in this, of course. You don't just throw them away as soon as you're done with them. Uh, first up, the, the one thing I don't really care for that much. Apparently, this is what you're supposed to do with it. I don't really care for it. Uh, whatever. And it's not like it's right here. And it's like more versatile with your hand. It's 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 kind of just stuck at your at the at the at the shoulder. So I'm not a big fan of it, but whatever. It's it's whatever. However, uh, you do get the gun, and you could just have it as a normal standard gun. You know, it's, it's just standard. But the Mister Fusion does come back into play that you can plug it in right here, or you could plug it. Right here. Well, how about here? How about now? Or apparently it doesn't want me to do that. So we'll plug it in here. Now the only issue here is that this thing is kind of limited and how far it can go because of now where it goes. However, if you just plug it in just slightly, that's enough right there. It's it's really good. <laughs> I, I I hate just keep on saying the same words over and over, but I really, really enjoy the fact that it, it it's here. It's just right in front of me, a DeLorean Transformer. As, as the year 2020 has been, it's great to see this. So real quick, before we get into the articulation, I want to do uh, size comparisons. Uh, first up, we'll start with Sideswipe. So they come out to basically the exact same size because, well, it would be kind of weird if they didn't. Um... Otherwise, uh, you can see there are quite a bit of similarities. Uh, the arms, for the most part, are about the same. Uh, there's obviously new transformation elements in the shoulders, but this is about the same here, and same with the hands. Uh, the feet are a little bit different, but they transform exactly the same way. The shins are, of course, different. Uh, the, the chest is different. But for the most part, uh, yeah, it's, it's about the same figure. There is more transformation elements with Gigawatt. Uh, that just becomes with how much remolding there is. But Sideswipe is still satisfying to transform. And I think that's, that's something I wanted to mention about Gigawatt. It's not that it's like complicated as all hell. Uh, some of my favorite figures this year have been Transformers with pretty hard or pretty interesting transformation elements. Um... Ectotron, which I will show here in a second, has somewhat of a confusing transformation on a few elements, um, namely the backpack. Uh, some of the NPM stuff is just difficult to transform just for that, you know, accuracy. Gigawatt is so satisfying to transform. Other than a couple of elements, it is such a satisfying transformation when everything in the end comes out the way it does. Either it's a robot or it's a car. It's so good, and I really, really enjoy it. Uh, speaking of Ectotron, why not we, we just throw him in here? So, let me adjust my camera a little bit. So, of course, like I said, this comes out to roughly a Voyager figure anyway, and this is today's Deluxe. So, halfway, and if there was the discussion of like, oh, well, it looks so weird in like, in, in like, uh, in car mode, like they don't look like they scale well at all. I think this is perfectly fine in robot mode, how they should scale. I mean, after all, no matter what, the Ecto-1 is a longer, bigger car than the DeLorean. The DeLorean was a sports car. It was a small sports car. So, it, no matter what, I, and I don't believe anybody. I think everybody is entitled to that opinion, and I can understand why they think it's 
a little off. I think it's perfect scaling. Uh, so, as you can see, I, I think this is a great scale too. These two figures are really good. And uh, an Ectotron, it, it's, I don't know why I've never done a review on the guy yet. But then again, why haven't I done reviews in general? But, yeah. One more little review, little, little size comparison. Uh, if you'd like to stand, is the Siege Swindler and... Aw, oh, don't talk to me or my son ever again. So now let's talk about the articulation. Uh, I'm going to remove the weapons and the stick. So, I, I want to talk about the one... Everything I've had a little gripe over has been just, you know, minor. There is one thing I do have a big, if not just a, a gripe about. It's the head. So the head... If you just you display it tall, proud, not leaning or anything, he just looks down. And, you know, at first it's just like, oh, maybe he's just like got stiff articulation, he won't look up. No. Um, he can have the ability to look up. It's something with the molding here. I think it's that little piece back there. You, barely, you probably can't see it, but there's like this little silver piece back here like on the back of the head that is inhibiting it from like just looking straight up. And I, I dislike that. Otherwise it is a 360 ball joint. So you can make it work any way you want. It's just that I hate that. I dislike that so much. Sideswipe did not have that. Either way, you do have a, not a ball joint, but you do have swivel out here. I'm going to hinge up here, swivel all the way. Uh, you got a swivel there, a bend, and the hand doesn't have anything other than this because of transformation. There is a waist swivel, and I dig that a lot. Not a ball joint, but very much a all-the-way kind of swivel kind of thing. Whoops, I've kind of messed him up a little bit. Hold on one second. And uh, no swivel here, but a, a bend. And this thing right here, he has a tilt. He can't do much else. You can kind of do that. Well, now, I suppose. Yeah. Well, you, either way, you do got a tilt. And that's something rare in toys anyway nowadays, just having a an ankle tilt like that. So overall, would I highly recommend Gigawatt? Of course I would. I recommend the Gigawatt for anybody who's like me, who very much is passionate about Transformers and Back to the Future. It's such a love letter to both franchises, I think. It's it's not just like a one side's more than the other. Obviously, you know, it is a Back to the Future toy, and it is also a Transformers toy. So it has everything that I want in both. And it's not like one overtakes the other. Obviously it does transform into a door, and so it's a 50-50. It's a 50-50 in general. It's a 50-50 on, on both franchises, of course. I sound stupid saying that, but whatever. It, it is great. And even if you're not a huge Back to the Future fan, I still recommend this toy in general because this toy is a lot of fun and it is very much a great toy. Like, I'm not a huge fan of Ghostbusters, but I still like Ghostbusters enough to buy Ectotron. I'm not a huge Top Gun fan, but I don't think I'll be getting Maverick unless it's at a clearance or just by happenstance I find one. This was something I wanted from day one. And whenever the scalpers took over the pre-order page, I was upset. Whenever it finally got on pre-order on Hasbro Pulse, I finally nabbed it. And one day on GameStop, uh, they had this figure in stock and ready to ship. And I, of course, nabbed it. And I forgot to cancel my pre-order, so I went out on this deal. Obviously, I spent 40 more dollars, but that's by the point. That is something I do want to mention, though. The price of this thing. So, Gigawatt is $30. And it's a hard price to justify, all things told. Ectotron in itself was 40 50 if you paid everything with shipping and everything. And I think I paid $50 for everything on Ectotron. So Gigawatt was 30 
it's almost it's a hard justification, and I understand some people that may have reservations just for that price alone. However, this is how I justified it. Deluxes nowadays are twenty dollars. As as much as it sucks, but deluxes are twenty bucks now. And you're, and then there's just that extra ten dollars. I believe it's because of the licensing fees, of course, of using the Back to the Future name and everything. So I'm willing to justify that this thing was thirty dollars. Eptotron being forty dollars was the $30 Voyager fee and then $10 for being a Ghostbusters licensing fee. And I think the same thing goes with Maverick, and I think the same thing goes for Expanse. I almost forgot about this guy until just now that they're making an X-Men Transformer. But anyway, this thing is $30. Bucks, and I, I, have, I understand people who might be like, no, I don't want to pay $30. But I really do believe this figure is worth the $30 I did pay for. Hell, this figure's worth the 60 I paid for. And that's excluding the shipping. So, overall, guys, I, I highly recommend this figure. And I don't know what else to say. It's been so long since I've done a review. So, I, bye, I suppose. <laughs> um, thanks for watching, and have a good day. Uh, if you can see me in the, the reflection, peace. Mm -hmm. <laughs>